A verse-by-verse -verse study in the book of Daniel, ESV, with Irv Rish, chapter 4. What does Daniel chapter 4 mean? In the prior chapters, King Nebuchadnezzar was portrayed as a vain, violent, vicious man, Daniel 2 verse 5, 3 15. This chapter begins with a radical shift in attitude. The king wishes peace to others and expresses a desire to explain signs and wonders done for him by God. Nebuchadnezzar proclaims the Lord's sovereignty before beginning to tell his story. What's recorded in this passage is still in Aramaic, rather than Hebrew, Daniel 2 4, 7 28, and was likely composed with Daniel's help, Daniel 4 verses 1 3. Once again, Daniel 2 verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar experiences a difficult dream and seeks out an interpreter. He summons all his wise men and advisors. None are helpful until Daniel arrives. Nebuchadnezzar addresses Daniel by the Babylonian name Belteshazzar and expresses confidence that Daniel can explain what the dream means. This comes across as a misguided belief that Daniel is in communication with a plurality of divine beings. Still, the king trusts his Hebrew counselor's ability, Daniel 4 verses 4 to 9. The king's dream features a massive tree. This tree is renowned all over the earth. It is not merely visible, but it is also profitable and valued everywhere. Critics sometimes prove a lack of context by suggesting this is an error in scripture. On the actual, spherical earth, even the tallest tree cannot be seen from everywhere. Yet this is part of Nebuchadnezzar's nighttime vision, and a symbol which turns out to be prophetic. What the king describes has meaning which will become clear later, Daniel 4 verses 10-12. Next in the dream, an angelic being announces that the tree is to be cut down to a stump, though the roots are to be left intact. The angel's subject then shifts, subtly. The stump is to be bound among grasses, and then, he, or, him, is to be soaked with dew and living as an animal. The imagery has changed from the tree to a man, driven insane for, seven periods of time. While Daniel's prophecy often uses, times, as a euphemism for, years, Daniel 7 verse 25, it is possible he means something different here. This series of events is expressed as a sentence of judgment, a declaration spoken by heavenly beings. The purpose is to prove that the, Most High, meaning God, is the ultimate power and authority. Daniel 4 verses 13-18 Daniel's reaction to this dream is a brief pause. It's possible he was simply stunned by what had been revealed. He may also have been concerned about how the infamously violent king would react to what he was about to say. Yet nothing suggests Daniel planned to speak anything but truth. He speaks carefully, even gently, wishing that the dream's meaning would apply to someone other than Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 4 verse 19. Nebuchadnezzar's dream is a personal prophecy. Like the impressive tree, the king of Babylon has become powerful and influential. Yet God has declared that Nebuchadnezzar will be humiliated with madness and loss of his mind. He will live with animals, eat like an animal, and be as unkempt and ragged as an animal. This judgment is to humble the arrogant king, he will recover, but not before coming to understand that, heaven, here used as a name for God, is truly in control. Daniel then boldly pleads with Nebuchadnezzar to set aside his sins, and serve other people, in the hopes that God might delay this catastrophe, Daniel 4 verses 20-27. One year later, Nebuchadnezzar congratulates himself while looking out over Babylon from the roof of his palace. Suddenly, a heavenly voice declares that the moment of judgment has arrived. As promised, Nebuchadnezzar immediately descends into insanity. He is ostracized from other people, living with wild animals, Daniel 5 verse 21, with his hair and fingernails grown ragged and long, Daniel 4 verses 28 to 33. As promised, this period of madness is temporary, lasting seven periods of time. The king is restored to his former state and rule. History records no other mention of Nebuchadnezzar's insanity, nor a temporary government. For this reason, some Bible scholars believe these periods were less than years, 
perhaps months. Scripture is vague on the exact timeline, emphasizing the more important point, that the king accepted the lesson which God intended. He humbles himself, acknowledging his frailty and limited nature in comparison to that of God. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar implies that the Lord God did the right thing in this instance. The king ends as he began, with an expression of God's perfect power and goodness, Daniel 4 verses 34-37. Chapter Context Daniel Chapter 1 depicted Babylon's King Nebuchadnezzar as powerful. Chapter 2 showed his vindictive nature. His extreme vanity was on display in Chapter 3. Daniel Chapter 4 records his submission, repentance, and return to prominence as the king of Babylon, all under God's humiliating judgment. Chapters 5, 6, and 7 continue to speak about Gentile rulers and related prophecies. Verse by verse. Verse 1. King Nebuchadnezzar to all peoples, nations, and languages, that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. This pa passage is in the form of an official document released by the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar. His tone is calm, in contrast to his prior moments of uncontrolled rage, Daniel 2 verse 5, 3 colon 19, 20. This shows how God had changed Nebuchadnezzar through the humbling experience described in the chapter. Commentators suggest the incident with the furnace and Daniel's three friends, Daniel 3 verse 28, may have occurred as long as thirty years prior to this declaration. Most suggest this decree was given shortly before the king's death in 562 BC. The language of the statement suggests that Daniel helped the king prepare his statement. It is also part of the segment of Daniel recorded in Aramaic, Daniel 2 4, 728, rather than in Hebrew. The Babylonian king refers to the Lord as the Most High God, Daniel 4 verse 2. Earlier, Nebuchadnezzar bragged about himself, but now he gives credit to God for doing great things for him. In this chapter, the Babylonian ruler will be humbled and then restored, as predicted by his dream and Daniel's interpretation, Daniel 4 verses 5 to 6. Context Summary Daniel 4 verses 1 to 18 introduces another of Nebuchadnezzar's mysterious dreams, Daniel 2 verses 2 to 3. As before, the king summoned his wise men to interpret the experience. They failed, but Nebuchadnezzar also spoke with Daniel, Daniel 2 verses 46 to 47. This time the king told his wise men and Daniel what he had dreamed. This sets the stage for Daniel's interpretation and the fulfillment of another prophecy. Verse 2. It has seemed good to me to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God has done for me. In this verse Nebuchadnezzar reveres the true God, whom he calls, Most High. It's likely that, in Nebuchadnezzar's beliefs, the Lord of Israel was the most prominent or powerful of a pantheon of lesser deities. He is probably not speaking of God as the one and only God and Creator. Yet the king recognizes the power and influence of the Lord worshipped by men such as Daniel, Daniel 2 verse 47, 328. Commentators suggest this chapter's contents were composed shortly before Nebuchadnezzar's death, after he had recovered from the judgment described in his dream, Daniel 4 verse 5. That humbling experience dramatically changed his perspective. Earlier, Nebuchadnezzar boasted about his own great power, Daniel 3 verse 15. Here, he gives credit to God for doing great things. Further, Nebuchadnezzar perceives that these signs were done for him, as lessons or messages from the Lord. Whether the king considered Daniel's first dream interpretation, Daniel 2 verse 36, or the miraculous rescue of three Hebrew captives, Daniel 3 verses 24-25, as part of those signs, he does not specify. Verse 3. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion endures from generation to generation. This declaration of praise is part of Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar's official statement, Daniel 4 verses 1 to 2, about his humbling experience, Daniel 4 verse 37. Earlier, in the case of the burning fiery furnace, the king observed God's miraculous power, 
Daniel 3 verses 24-25. Before that, God's power was demonstrated in Daniel's interpretation of a troubling dream, Daniel 2 verse 36. Many Bible interpreters believe Daniel assisted in writing Nebuchadnezzar's proclamation or recorded it on the king's behalf. In the incident of the first dream, Nebuchadnezzar was presented as the ruler of a massive, powerful kingdom, Daniel 2 verses 37-38, which would eventually be overtaken by other, lesser nations, Daniel 2 verses 39-40. Here, however, the king speaks of God ruling a kingdom without end. This description resembles Psalm 145 verse 13. The realm mentioned here does not seem to be the future messianic kingdom which Jesus will rule on earth. Rather, this verse speaks of God's universal kingdom which includes heaven and earth. As sovereign over the universal kingdom, God rules over the affairs of human beings and nations. Romans 13 verse 1 exhorts, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instated by God. Verse 4. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at ease in my house and prospering in my palace. Nebuchadnezzar begins his dramatic story, Daniel 4 verses 1 to 3, here. It begins in his palace, where he was at ease and doing well. He was a mighty king with a broad reign, Daniel 2 verses 37 to 38. He had built a comfortable palace and beautified the city of Babylon. Soon, however, he was extremely uneasy and impoverished. This part of the book of Daniel was recorded in Aramaic, which was then the common language of Babylon, Daniel 2 4, 728. The prophecies of this segment involve part of what Bible scholars refer to as the times of the Gentiles. This era of world history will finish in the end times, in moments described by prophecies in books such as Daniel and Revelation. In that final time, a form of government will crush all opponents, Revelation 13 verses 4 and 7, and establish a version of peace and security. Revelation 6 verse 4 depicts a rider on a bright red horse at the beginning of the tribulation as, permitted to take peace from the earth. This suggests that a form of peace will characterize conditions on earth near the end of the times of the Gentiles. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 predicts, while people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them. Revelation 18 verses 11 to 21 Depicts the cataclysmic end of Babylon's prosperity under God's hand of judgment at the close of the tribulation. Verse 5 I saw a dream that made me afraid. As I lay in bed the fancies and the visions of my head alarmed me. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon recalls having a frightening dream. This is the second time Nebuchadnezzar had a troubling dream. Daniel chapter 2 describes the first experience. Both dreams portrayed future events, Daniel 2 verse 29, for colon 24, 25. The Bible presents several instances in which dreams transmitted divine revelation. God issued warnings to Abimelech and Laban, Genesis 20, 31 24, and Pilate's wife's dream was the basis for her warning Pilate to have nothing to do with Jesus, Matthew 27 verse 19. He communicated this way to Jacob, Genesis 28 verse 12, 31 10 13, to Solomon, 1 Kings 3 verse 5, and to Joseph, Mary's husband, Matthew 1 verse 20. With the completion of the New Testament, dreams are no longer necessary means for God to communicate His will. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16-17 indicates that the written word, the Scriptures, are inspired by the Lord and useful for everything we must know about Him. They teach believers what they ought to believe and how they ought to live. As believers study and obey the Scriptures, they develop spiritual maturity and become effective servants of God. God can, of course, still communicate to people in dreams. But it is important to base one's understanding of any dream on the revealed truth of Scripture. Verse 6. So I made a decree that all the wise men of Babylon should be brought before me, that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. 
Just as Nebuchadnezzar had summoned court advisors to interpret his first frightening dream, Daniel 2 verse 2, so he gathers his wise men to address his second dream, Daniel 4 verses 4 to 5. However, this time he tells the men the dream rather than require them to tell him both the dream and its interpretation, Daniel 2 verses 3 to 6, for colon 7. A major facet of the prior incident was the inability of Babylonian magicians to uncover the secret of the king's dream, Daniel 2 verses 8 to 11. This raises the question of why Nebuchadnezzar would not immediately speak to Daniel, or why he would bother wasting time with the other court advisors, Daniel 4 verse 7. There are several possible explanations, all of which might have been true in various proportions. A practical reason might have been location. The king is said to have commanded wise men to be brought, so at least some of them would have been serving elsewhere at the time. Daniel had been set in high office, Daniel 2 verse 48, and was not likely serving as one of the king's on-hand counselors. The court magicians and enchanters would have been near at hand. They would have been the first ones to arrive and there would have been no reason not to let them attempt an answer. That these men were consulted first may have been because they were closest and Daniel had not yet arrived. And yet, the king is said to be calling all his wise men from the kingdom, not merely Daniel. The wisdom of the world seems incredibly attractive to unbelievers. Knowledge and ability, separated from an understanding of God, leads to false reassurance. Of course, what limited people consider wise is foolish to God, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 19. The ultimate answers to life's riddles and problems rest in God's Word. The psalmist writes in Psalm 119 verse 105, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. In verse 130 he writes, The unfolding of your words gives light, it imparts understanding to the simple. In an earlier incident, Israel's king Ahab delayed speaking with a legitimate prophet because he didn't like what God's messenger typically had to say, 1 Kings 22 verse 8. Perhaps Nebuchadnezzar was hoping other counselors could offer something less challenging than Daniel. Verse 7. Then the magicians, the enchanters, the Chaldeans, and the astrologers came in, and I told them the dream, but they could not make known to me its interpretation. In ancient Babylon, the king employed various occultists and advisors to whom he could refer on various subjects. In this verse, these men are listed as magicians and enchanters. Likewise, the king's culture believed that stars and planets guided men's fates, so astrologers were kept on hand. The men designated, Chaldeans, were part of this team. The Chaldean culture was so associated with fortune-telling and astrology that the terms were nearly interchangeable. When, in the past, Nebuchadnezzar had a troubling dream, these were the men to whom he looked for answers, Daniel 2 verses 1-2. As a combined group, the first men to whom the king speaks are involved in exorcisms, spells, and reading stars. After the last incident, Daniel 2 verses 8-11, one would expect the king to simply ask for Daniel. Yet Nebuchadnezzar has summoned all his wise men, Daniel 4 verse 6, implying some who were not available immediately. Daniel was given great responsibility, Daniel 2 verse 48, so he likely would not have been waiting by the king's side for such an event. While waiting for his Hebrew captive, the king seems to have let the court spiritists attempt to solve his problem. None of these men could give an answer. The book of Ecclesiastes makes clear the folly of searching for the meaning of life anywhere but in God. Every search that excludes God is labeled a vanity. The preacher in Ecclesiastes speaks of the importance of remembering our Creator when we are young, Ecclesiastes 12 verses 1 to 8. The conclusion the writer of Ecclesiastes draws is that it is best to fear God and obey Him, Ecclesiastes 12 verses 13 to 14. Verse 8. At last Daniel came in before me, he who was named Belteshazzar after the name of my God and in whom is the Spirit of the Holy Gods, and I told him the dream, saying. After a troubling dream, Daniel 4 verses 4-5, Nebuchadnezzar put out a summons to all the wise men of his kingdom. That suggests that Daniel, already proven at interpreting dreams, Daniel 2 verse 19, was also called. 
yet because of his important position, Daniel 2 verse 48, he was probably not available as quickly as the court occultists. When the king says that Daniel came in, at last, it refers to anticipation, not a suggestion that Daniel was literally the last person consulted. It's also possible the king was hoping to get a happier answer from his magicians than he expected from Daniel. Many years before Nebuchadnezzar, Israel's king Ahab put off speaking with a prophet of God, 1 Kings 22 verse 8, because he didn't like what that prophet often had to say. In fact, Ahab mistreated God's messenger for faithfully delivering bad news, 1 Kings 22 verses 26-28. Nebuchadnezzar's program for Hebrew captives, Daniel 1 verses 1-5, included renaming the captives to cement their identity as servants of Babylon, Daniel 1 verses 6-7. Because of Daniel's prior success, the king sees him as one in direct contact with divine beings. As a pagan, and worshipper of many false gods, the king consulted with idols before seeking an answer from someone who served the true God. Unbelievers often resort to unreliable sources for answers to their problems before turning to God as a last resort. Yet Nebuchadnezzar remembered that Daniel had interpreted his previous frightening dream. Verse 9. O Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the Spirit of the Holy Gods is in you and that no mystery is too difficult for you, tell me the visions of my dream that I saw and their interpretation. This verse reveals Nebuchadnezzar's confidence in Daniel, Daniel 2 verses 19 and 48. Nebuchadnezzar's reference to the Holy Gods shows that he was still polytheistic, believing in and worshipping multiple deities. He already respected the power of Daniel's God yet he did not see the Lord as one and only. This fits with the king's use of Daniel's assigned pagan name, Belteshazzar, Daniel 1 verses 6-7, which refers to the idol bell. The king also pays Daniel a significant compliment, referring to him as, chief of the magicians. In some contexts, the word, magicians, can be translated, scholars. Nebuchadnezzar believed Daniel was wiser than all the wise men in Babylon and the most knowledgeable scholar in the empire. He perceived Daniel as thoroughly acquainted with Babylonian astrology and religion. Without a doubt, he was sure Daniel had access to dream interpretations, Daniel 2 verses 27-30. Therefore, he asked Daniel for advice. It's possible that, as before, he asked Daniel to first explain the dream, Daniel 2 verses 4-5, before giving its meaning, but previous verses seem to indicate the king told the content of the dream to Daniel and to the enchanters who attempted interpretation prior to Daniel's arrival, Daniel 4 verses 7-8. Verse 10. The visions of my head as I lay in bed were these, I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. When Nebuchadnezzar had his first disturbing dream, he insisted his wise men relate the vision, itself, instead of simply giving him an interpretation, Daniel 2 verses 1-6, 17-19. It's possible he did the same thing here, Daniel 4 verse 9, asking Daniel to first describe the dream, and then to give its meaning. But the narrative seems to indicate that the king told the enchanters and Daniel the content of the dream, Daniel 4 verses 7-8. One way or another, the king and his captive advisor, Daniel 1 verses 1 to 6, agreed on the content of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. The king's dream depicted an enormous tree. He was familiar with Lebanon, the home of infamously massive trees with wide branches and cones the size of a person's hand. There, the king would have observed the process of cutting down tall cedars for his construction projects in Babylon. The cedars of Lebanon were also prominent in the construction of David's palace and in the construction of Solomon's temple and palace six centuries prior to Nebuchadnezzar's reign. According to 2 Chronicles 2 verses 3-10, Solomon had requested that Hiram, king of Tyre, send him cedars in exchange for massive quantities of wheat, barley, wine, and oil. The cedar of Lebanon has been called the king of trees, in comparison with other trees found in Bible lands. This sense of dominance will connect to the dream's meaning, as explained later by Daniel, Daniel 4 verse 22. 
Verse 11. The tree grew and became strong, and its top reached to heaven, and it was visible to the end of the whole earth. This description comes from a dream, not an actual example. Nebuchadnezzar is consulting with Daniel about a troubling vision, Daniel 4 verses 4-5, 8-9. Critics who simply skim passages without reading them in context sometimes point to this as an example of scientific error. On a spherical earth, no tree would be visible from everywhere, no matter how tall it might be. Yet this depiction is part of a dream, what the king sees in his sleep is not part of the real world. Some translators dispute the word visible. This is the simplest rendering, but the implication goes beyond just line of sight. The tree is described as incredibly influential and important, Daniel 4 verse 12. The tree is not simply seen, it is known and revered. This factors into the meaning of Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel 4 verse 22, which implies that the mighty king will be humbled, Daniel 4 verse 25. Nebuchadnezzar had increased significantly in terms of the size of his kingdom and its strength. Everyone in the known world at the time could see the greatness of the Babylonian Empire. Other empires had existed before Babylon. Chief among them were Egypt, Syria, and Assyria, but none of them had grown to the magnitude and splendor of the Babylonian Empire. Nebuchadnezzar held sway over a vast, powerful, and productive kingdom. But would it last much longer? In his interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's first dream, Daniel gave an answer, Daniel 2 verses 39-40. In this case, as well, the king's absolute rule will not last forever. What applied to Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom applies as well to powerful nations today. Someday all kingdoms of the world, including the most powerful ones, will surrender their rule to King Jesus, Revelation 11 verse 15. Verse 12. Its leaves were beautiful and its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it, and the birds of the heavens lived in its branches, and all flesh was fed from it. Babylon was a beautiful city, as were the leaves of the tree Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream, Daniel 4 verses 4 to 5. Nebuchadnezzar had undertaken many projects to enrich his capital. The tree was not only beautiful to look at but also highly productive. It bore abundant fruit that provided food for all. Nebuchadnezzar was regarded as a benefactor by countless thousands of people in his realm. These attributes reflect the meaning of this dream, as explained later by Daniel, Daniel 4 verses 20-22. It has been suggested that in preparation for a siege, the city of Babylon could store enough supplies to last decades. Whether or not such claims are accurate, the city was certainly well prepared for war and hardship. People in Babylon felt safe in the face of any enemy who laid siege. Also, the city contained wheat fields and hanging gardens. Nebuchadnezzar's symbolic tree provided shade for animals and safe nesting for birds. Babylon's citizens must have felt safe behind the city's strong walls. Also, the city had an abundant water supply because the Euphrates River ran through it from north to south. Daniel chapter 5 relates that the Persian army captured Babylon, despite these preparations. History indicates the Persians diverted the river which flowed through the city, invading through the resulting gap in the wall. Verse 13 I saw in the visions of my head as I lay in bed, and behold, a watcher, a holy one, came down from heaven. Nebuchadnezzar is describing his dream, Daniel 4 verses 4 to 5, which included an image of a massive, productive, respected tree, Daniel 4 verses 10 to 12. Next, the king observed a heavenly being. Religions like those common in Babylon included a council of deities who watched over the world. While Nebuchadnezzar would understand holy to simply mean godlike, Daniel understood it to mean something separated unto God for his service. Although Nebuchadnezzar would have assumed the spirit he saw was a god, Daniel would know this was an angel. The modern term angel derives from a Greek term, and in both Greek and Hebrew, the term for an angel is literally messenger. The Hebrew concept of angels saw them as those who served God and brought his messages 
rather than as fully independent spiritual beings. Revelation 14 verse 10 refers to God's holy angels as witnessing the punishment of whoever worships the beast and his image in the tribulation period. An angel is seen in the role of messenger as he speaks to Mary concerning the son who would be born to her, Luke 1 verses 26-33. Angels served as God's messengers by heralding to shepherds the good news of Jesus' birth, Luke 2 verses 8-14. Verse 14. He proclaimed aloud and said thus, Chop down the tree and lop off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beasts flee from under it and the birds from its branches. In King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel 4 verses 4-5, 10-12, he sees a massive tree and then an angelic being, Daniel 4 verse 13. The angel from heaven carried a stern message. The tree, while tall, beautiful, bountiful, and beneficial, would not be that way forever. Instead, it would be cut down. Its limbs would be removed and all its valuable fruit taken away. As a result, the animals would hurry away from its shade, and the birds would fly away from its branches. The symbolism is explained later in the chapter. The tree is Nebuchadnezzar and his vast empire. His power would be severed from him, Daniel 4 verse 25. History's final degenerate kingdom emerges in the tribulation period. This will be ruled by a wicked dictator called the Beast. Revelation 13 portrays the Beast as emerging from the sea and commanding a vast kingdom. This figure will hold authority over every tribe and people and language and nation, Revelation 13 verse 7. But the Beast's kingdom, like Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, will be cut down. God will destroy the Babylon of the Tribulation, Revelation 17 15, 18 2, but first He will warn His people to come out of that wicked culture, Revelation 18 verse 4. Verse 15. But leave the stump of its roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze, amid the tender grass of the field. Let him be wet with the dew of heaven. Let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. This verse makes a subtle, but important shift in perspective. As part of a troubling dream, Daniel 4 verses 4 to 5, King Nebuchadnezzar saw a massive tree, Daniel 4 verse 11. This was a renowned and valuable resource, providing shade and food for all, Daniel 4 verse 12. But it was to be cut down and all its beautiful leaves, branches, and fruit were to be scattered, Daniel 4 verses 13 to 14. Here, the angelic messenger starts speaking of the tree as, it, then transitions to speaking of, he, and, him. This relates to the idea that the tree symbolizes Nebuchadnezzar himself, Daniel 4 verses 20-22. Although the tree is cut down, the stump is to be left intact. This is an important detail, as the stump and roots retain the potential to grow in the future. This imagery is used in other scriptures to depict something ruined, or defeated, which yet survives and returns to a state of growth, Isaiah 6 verse 13, 11 verse 1, Job 14 verses 7 to 9. As the king's vision is untangled, Daniel reveals that Nebuchadnezzar's power will be ruined, but not eliminated, Daniel 4 verse 26. The reference to binding the stump is part of the transition from symbolism to something more direct. The stump is being bound into the grass. The angelic speaker then begins to speak of him, meaning the same entity once depicted by the tree. This being is depicted as soaked in grassy dew and confined to an animal like existence. Upcoming verses will speak of this person being plagued by a period of insanity, as both judgment and education in humility, Daniel 4 verses 16 to 17. This transition to a person, rather than a tree, is likely what most bothered King Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 16. Let his mind be changed from a man, s, and let a beast, s mind be given to him, and let seven periods of time pass over him. The dream which bothered King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 4 verses 4 to 5, began by depicting a massive tree, Daniel 4 verses 10 to 12. An angelic messenger appeared and commanded this tree be cut down to a stump, Daniel 4 verses 13 to 14. 
Then, suddenly, this messenger began to speak about a person, rather than a plant, Daniel 4 verse 15. Here, the symbolism is made clearer by indicating that the person in question would be driven insane. This person, the same one symbolized by the formerly impressive tree, would be confined to that state for seven periods of time. This part of the dream must have been extremely terrifying for Nebuchadnezzar as he presumably suspected the meaning was very personal, and not simply about the kingdom of Babylon. As Daniel will confirm, soon, this predicts that King Nebuchadnezzar will suffer a humiliating period of severe mental illness, Daniel 4 verses 24 to 25. Scholars and interpreters differ on the exact meaning of the seven periods of time. In other prophetic passages, this might imply seven years. For example, in Daniel 7 verse 25, the reference to a time, times, and half a time is generally interpreted to mean three and a half years, Revelation 12 verses 6 and 14. For Nebuchadnezzar to grow his hair and nails long, Daniel 4 verse 33, would take more than seven days or weeks. Scholars also question whether the ruler of such a kingdom could be incapacitated for seven years without such a thing being noted in other records. A shorter term of insanity, however, might not have been recorded by historians. In this instance, the meaning may not be tied to the exact duration of the king's suffering. The message is about God humbling an arrogant ruler, Daniel 4 verse 37. The use of seven implies completeness. That there are periods of time implies it would be a temporary concern, not a lifelong malady. Verse 17. The sentence is by the decree of the watchers, the decision by the word of the holy ones, to the end that the living may know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will and sets over it the lowliest of men. The angelic decree, Daniel 4 verse 13, ends by stating the purpose of the humiliating events that would happen to Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 4 verses 14 to 16. The purpose of these events is to teach Nebuchadnezzar humility before God. Despite the king's arrogance, Daniel 3 verse 15, and great power, Daniel 2 verses 36 to 38, the Lord gives ability to whomever he chooses. Compared to the Lord God, any ruler is just a lowly, limited human being. Nebuchadnezzar had considered himself a deity with vast authority over a vast empire. His pride prompted him to set up an idol on the plain of Dura and force his subjects to worship it, Daniel 3 verses 1-6. However, the Lord planned to teach Nebuchadnezzar that God is the supreme ruler of everything in heaven and on earth. This verse speaks of the watchers as a group and the judgment to be a decree and decision of that group. However, this does not imply that the collection of spiritual beings decided on this result. Nor does it mean the judgment is enforced on their authority. In the original language, the first phrase of this verse is composed only of nouns. A more poetic and literalist rendering might be simply to state, the decree of the watchers, a sentence, a command of the holy ones, a decision. Context and translation are needed to include verbs. The impression is that these angelic voices are declaring something, they are announcing it officially, indicating that it has been decided. Such a message is delivered under the direction of God, the Most High. Romans 13 verse 1 affirms the truth that God places human beings in positions of authority over nations, there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Verse 18. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, saw. And you, O Belteshazzar, tell me the interpretation, because all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Nebuchadnezzar has recalled his frightening dream, Daniel 4 verses 4-5, 10-17. Now he turns to Daniel, Daniel 4 verses 6-9, for an interpretation. The king calls Daniel by his Babylonian name, Belteshazzar, Daniel 1 verses 6-7. This was a reference to the false deity Bel and a sign to Daniel to emphasize his new identity as a servant of Babylon. 
However, the king recognizes Daniel's access to power unavailable to pagan occultists, Daniel 1 verse 17. He has seen this connection to truth in action at least once before, Daniel 2 verses 46-47. Despite this, the king does not yet identify Daniel's God as the only real God. Instead, he perceives the Lord of Israel as one of many beings. This is why he credits Daniel's ability to the Spirit of the Holy Gods, rather than to God alone. This is not the only time in Scripture that a godly man like Daniel declares truth which had eluded worldly wise individuals. For example, Pharaoh of Egypt was troubled by a dream and called together all the magicians of Egypt and all his wise men. He told them his dream, but not one of them could tell him what the dream meant, Genesis 41 verse 8. Finally, he learned that imprisoned Joseph could interpret dreams. Therefore, Pharaoh summoned Joseph. Joseph interpreted that vision and attributed his ability to God's power, Genesis 41 verses 9 to 32. Verse 19. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was dismayed for a while, and his thoughts alarmed him. The king answered and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation alarm you. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, may the dream be for those who hate you and its interpretation for your enemies. For the second time in this book, Daniel 2 verses 1-2, King Nebuchadnezzar has been disturbed by a dream, Daniel 4 verses 4-5. Once again, he finds himself speaking with Daniel, a Hebrew captive, Daniel 1 verses 1-7 who has proven able to relay divine interpretation of dreams, Daniel 2 verses 46-47. The recent vision involved a massive tree which an angelic being commanded be cut down to a stump, Daniel 4 verses 10-14, and for a man to be condemned to temporary insanity, Daniel 4 verses 15-18. Daniel, the Hebrew name, identifies him with the Lord of Israel. The name Daniel literally means, God is my judge. The name given to him by his Babylonian captors was Baltashet's Tsar, a reference to the false god Bel. This verse uses both names, presenting Daniel as both a respected advisor of the Babylonian Empire and a faithful servant of God. Daniel hesitates to give the king what is certainly bad news. Interpreters disagree about how long Daniel paused. The phrasing could mean a literal, by the clock hour, or merely a vague length of time. In any case, it's long enough for Nebuchadnezzar to notice, and to encourage Daniel to speak. What Daniel sees is dramatic. It's possible his delay was, in part, a reaction of surprise and shock at what was about to happen. Commentators mention two other reasons Daniel may have paused, noting that all three likely applied. First, Nebuchadnezzar has demonstrated an outrageous temper, Daniel 2 verse 5, 3 colon 19, 20. Scripture includes other examples of ungodly men punishing the Lord's messengers for telling the truth, 1 Kings 22 verses 26 to 28, Mark 6 verses 17 to 18. However, this is not Daniel wavering in his faith, nothing in the text suggests he considered telling Nebuchadnezzar anything but the truth. In fact, Daniel will go on to make a blunt appeal for the king to stop sinning and seek God's mercy, Daniel 4 verse 27. Second, Daniel probably paused to choose his words carefully. He speaks to King Nebuchadnezzar with respect and almost gentleness, 1 Peter 3 verses 15 to 17. Daniel immediately wishes the dream had applied to Nebuchadnezzar's enemies, rather than to the king himself. Rather than reveling in the idea of his captor being humiliated, Daniel appears sympathetic. In this, Daniel demonstrates the proper attitude of respect for authority, even when such leaders are not believers. It is always right for Christians to respect authorities, regardless of agreement on policies or lifestyle. And it is always wrong to delight in the eternal punishment unbelieving authorities will experience if they reject Christ. God, himself, declares that he prefers people turn to life, rather than death, and does not enjoy seeing lost people suffer, Ezekiel 18 verses 30-32.
Context Summary Daniel 4 verses 19-27 provides Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's recent dream, Daniel 4 verses 4-5. Daniel briefly hesitates, perhaps wondering if Nebuchadnezzar will lash out in anger over what he is about to say. As the king likely feared, his dream means he will suffer humiliation and insanity for seven periods of time. Daniel acknowledges that this is terrible news. He appeals to the king to set aside sin, to at least delay the fulfillment of this judgment. Verse 20. The tree you saw, which grew, and became strong, so that its top reached to heaven, and it was visible to the end of the whole earth. At Nebuchadnezzar's prodding, Daniel 4 verse 19, Daniel begins his interpretation of the king's recent frightful dream, Daniel 4 verses 4 to 5. What he describes in the next few verses effectively duplicates the description given by Nebuchadnezzar in the prior passage, Daniel 4 verses 10 to 17. Daniel first focuses on the image of the which grew strong and could be seen from all points of the kingdom. He will go on to point out that this image represents the king, himself, Daniel 4 verse 22. Nebuchadnezzar became a strong ruler, who reigned over everyone in the kingdom. It was clear to all that he was in charge. Evidence of his strength is seen in his summoning all the wise men in Babylon to the palace and commanding them to interpret his first dream, Daniel 2 verse 2, or be torn limb from limb and have their houses leveled, Daniel 2 verse 5. His immense power is seen, also, in his construction of a huge image of gold that he set on the plain of Dura, Daniel 3 verses 1 to 5. He commanded everyone to worship the idol. Failure to do so incurred the penalty of execution by fire, Daniel 3 verse 6. Verse 21. Whose leaves were beautiful and its fruit abundant, and in which was food for all, under which beasts of the field found shade, and in whose branches the birds of the heavens lived. Daniel is repeating the dream which bothered King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 4 verses 4 to 5. This vision included a massive tree with wonderful leaves and valuable fruits, Daniel 4 verses 10 to 12. As Daniel continues, he will confirm that this tree symbolizes Nebuchadnezzar, himself, Daniel 4 verse 22. The dream as a whole warns that the king will suffer insanity and humiliation, Daniel 4 verses 22 to 27. King Nebuchadnezzar was known for his efforts to make Babylon glorious. He rebuilt and beautified the temple of Belmarduk. He also beautified the Nebo temple. Further, he devoted time and means to repair and construct sites in Ur, Larsa, Sippar, Erech, and Kutha. He built new streets in Babylon and strengthened the city's walls. Excavations uncovered the Ishtar gate that was adorned with a series of bulls and dragons in enameled colored brick. Also adorned in enamel brick was Nebuchadnezzar's throne room, which featured geometric designs. His hanging gardens were among the seven wonders of the ancient world. The tree's beautiful leaves and provision of food for all certainly pictured Nebuchadnezzar. And just as the animals took refuge under the tree and the birds took shelter in the tree, so Nebuchadnezzar's subjects took a measure of security from his rule. However, the dream included the tree being cut down, Daniel 4 verses 13-15. Verse 22. It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong. Your greatness has grown and reaches to heaven, and your dominion to the ends of the earth. Faithful to his appointment as a prophet, Daniel 1 verse 17, 2 19, Daniel's brief hesitation, Daniel 4 verse 19, quickly fades. He repeats the details of Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel 4 verses 20-21, and confirms that the tree symbolizes the king, himself. Nebuchadnezzar had become strong and famous throughout the ancient world. This was the good news about the trees symbolizing King Nebuchadnezzar. But bad news soon follows. The king will suffer humiliation and insanity, Daniel 4 verses 25-27. As a strong ruler of worldwide notoriety, Nebuchadnezzar foreshadows the beast of the end times. The beast is the last Gentile ruler in the times of the Gentiles. His kingdom, like Nebuchadnezzar's, 
will spread everywhere like the tree in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. He, too, will provide protection and provision for those who bow to his authority, just as animals and birds found safety in the tree. All who submit to the beast's authority will receive a mark on their right hand or forehead that allows them to buy and sell. Without this mark many will starve to death, Revelation 13. Verse 23. Daniel refers again to Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel 4 verses 10-12. He recalls the angelic being who orders the cutting down of the tree until only its stump remains, Daniel 4 verses 13 to 15. Daniel's words repeat the dream's transition from speaking about an, it, the tree, to a, him. The tree stump is bound, and the person it represents is, bound, in madness and an animalistic mind, Daniel 4 verse 16. Nebuchadnezzar will suffer this fate, Daniel 4 verses 24 to 25. He will become like an animal, wallowing and eating as a mindless beast for seven periods of time. Interpreters differ about how long these periods are. Some suggest seven years, others a shorter span. In any case, the king will be driven utterly insane and forced to accept his lowly state compared to God. In the same way, commentators differ as to whether Nebuchadnezzar would come to believe he was an animal, or if he would simply be incapacitated by madness. Verse 24. This is the interpretation, O King, it is a decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King. Daniel respectfully addresses King Nebuchadnezzar but confirms that the fateful events predicted in the king's dream are the decree of God himself, Daniel 4 verses 10-17, 22-23. The king will suffer insanity and incompetence, losing his power and his mind, Daniel 4 verse 25. Yet his rule will not be destroyed, rather, he would return to his senses once he came to know that God was sovereign, Daniel 4 verse 26. In the Old Testament, God notes his willingness to delay or reverse impending doom on cultures who repent and submit to him, Jeremiah 18 verses 7-8, Jonah 3 colon 5, 4 colon 1. At times, he did the same for individual people, Isaiah 38 verses 1-5. In this case, however, Daniel only offers Nebuchadnezzar a chance to postpone his fate, Daniel 4 verse 27. As a powerful ruler, Nebuchadnezzar assumed he could subdue any threat to his rule, Daniel 3 verse 15. He needed to learn humility to accept that he could not subdue, delay, or alter God's decree. Nebuchadnezzar controlled a mighty army, but God commands a host of mighty angels. When the Syrian army surrounded the city of Dothan in pursuit of Elisha, Elisha prayed that his servant's eyes would open. The servant saw the Lord's horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha, 2 Kings 6 verse 17. No one has ever fought against God and won the battle, and no one ever will. Nebuchadnezzar was powerful but the Most High is all-powerful. Even the collective nations are like a drop in the bucket or dust on the scales to God, Isaiah 40 verse 15. Verse 25. That you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. You shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and you shall be wet with the dew of heaven, and seven periods of time shall pass over you, till you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. This is the climax of Daniel's terrible news, as given to Babylon's king Nebuchadnezzar. The king's recent dream, Daniel 4 verses 10 to 17, means he will be driven insane. The now mighty ruler will be like a mindless animal, bound in madness for seven periods of time. Only when the king grasps his humble state, compared to God, will this judgment be lifted. It's not clear if the king came to believe he was, in fact, an animal and attempted to eat grass. The other possibility is that he was only mindless and incoherent, lacking any sense or reason. When this inevitable doom comes, it will last long enough for the king's hair and nails to grow into a disheveled mess, Daniel 4 verse 33. In Nebuchadnezzar's time, mental health institutions did not exist. The common practice was to simply drive insane people out of inhabited areas. It seems unlikely this would be Nebuchadnezzar's fate, 
considering that he would eventually be restored, Daniel 4 verse 34. Yet he may well have been kept with livestock or other animals during his time of insanity. Verse 26. And as it was commanded to leave the stump of the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be confirmed for you from the time that you know that heaven rules. Following a dire prediction of insanity and humiliation, Daniel 4 verses 24-25, King Nebuchadnezzar received some good news. In his dream, the king was symbolized as a tree cut down to a stump, Daniel 4 verses 10-14. Yet the stump's roots were left intact, so that it could one day begin to sprout new growth, Daniel 4 verse 15. As Daniel now explains, the tree's surviving stump and roots indicate that Nebuchadnezzar's isolation and animal-like existence will end. He will not only survive this madness, but he will rule his kingdom once again. This return to sanity will only happen once the king comes to appreciate that he is merely a man, he is not divine. True power is not found in Babylon, but in heaven. The Supreme Lord is not Nebuchadnezzar, but the Lord God. The context of Daniel's comment suggests that, heaven, is being used as a euphemism for God, which is why many translations capitalize the term as, heavens. In his grace and mercy God would limit the two punishments. Nebuchadnezzar's insanity would last only a limited time. Some Bible teachers suggest that Daniel took Nebuchadnezzar's place as king, but this is purely speculation. There is no biblical or secular mention of Daniel ruling Babylon. Indeed, it is an unlikely occurrence. If Daniel had occupied such a powerful position, he probably would have restored the captive Hebrews to their homeland. In fact, there is no other record of Nebuchadnezzar suffering in this way. A possible reason is that a temporary government was established, likely in secret, until the madness had passed. Verse 27 Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to you, break off your sins by practicing righteousness, and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed, that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. As a man of God, Daniel delivered a true interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel 4 verses 24-26, despite the Babylonian king's infamously vindictive nature, Daniel 2 verse 5, 3 colon 19, 20. Yet Daniel does not stop there. He boldly advises the king to free himself from enslavement to sin, turning instead to God. He suggests that Nebuchadnezzar should turn away from doing harm to others and instead show compassion, in the hopes that God might delay a while before bringing this judgment. The first part of Daniel's counsel refers to Nebuchadnezzar's relationship to God. The second part refers to his relationship to people. The repentant believer enjoys the privilege of being righteous in God's sight, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, but he also bears the responsibility to do good to everyone as he has opportunity to do so, Galatians 6 verse 10. Jesus taught, Let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven, Matthew 5 verse 16. Scripture does not record the king's reaction to this staggering display of fearlessness and integrity. This grit is characteristic of Daniel. When he was still young, he committed himself not to eat defiled food despite the orders of his captors, Daniel 1 verse 8. Here, he has the nerve to tell Nebuchadnezzar, a violent, vengeful, tyrant, to stop sinning and get right with God. Later, Daniel will defy a law against praying to God by doing so in front of his open windows, Daniel 6 verse 10. Verse 28. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. This verse confirms that what God decreed would occur, as shown in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, happened in just that way. The king dreamed of a massive tree which was sentenced to be cut down to a stump, Daniel 4 verses 10-14. His dream included judgment in the form of a period of insanity, Daniel 4 verses 15-17. Daniel explained that the king would be humiliated with madness for seven periods of time, but would ultimately be restored to rule, Daniel 4 verses 24-26. The following verses record what happened one year after Daniel's visit, Daniel 4 verses 8 and 29. 
To be sure, God's timing may differ from that of humans, but in His chosen time He will fulfill His promises and prophecies. The Apostle Peter writes about the way skeptics will respond to delayed fulfillment of prophecy as if the prophecy is false, 2 Peter 3 verse 4. God always keeps His word. Everything He prophesies comes to pass. The most important of these predictions involve Jesus Christ. His birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension were foretold in the Old Testament and their fulfillment is described in the New Testament. Even the prophecy in Micah 5 verse 2 was fulfilled to the letter. When Jesus was born, two locations were called by the title, Bethlehem. Micah 5 verse 2 specified that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem Ephrathah, a little town about five miles from Jerusalem. Every prophecy concerning Jesus' second coming will be fulfilled too. This fact gives believers a blessed hope. Context Summary Daniel 4 verses 28-37 records the fulfillment of Nebuchadnezzar's dream, which Daniel had faithfully interpreted, Daniel 4 verses 4-27. As God said would happen, the king's arrogance is judged with humiliation and insanity. Only when Nebuchadnezzar acknowledges the supremacy of the Lord is he restored to his right mind. The passage returns to where the chapter began, with the king's praise for God's power and majesty, Daniel 4 verses 1 to 3. Verse 29. At the end of twelve months he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. One year after receiving the interpretation of his dream, Daniel 4 verses 24 to 26, Nebuchadnezzar was walking on the huge flat roof that covered the beautiful palace he had built. God's judgment had not yet fallen on Nebuchadnezzar. Perhaps God was giving him time to repent as Daniel had advised him to do, Daniel 4 verse 27. But God's grace cannot be spurned forever. Judgment was about to fall, Daniel 4 verses 30 to 33. Several biblical stories show how graciously God delays judgment so that the guilty may repent. 1 Peter 3 verse 20 recalls that God waited patiently in the days of Noah. He also gave the Canaanite centuries to turn to him from paganism, providing for them the witnessing of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He gave Nineveh an opportunity to repent, Jonah 3. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 explains the last two millennia. The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. However, no one should think they have unlimited time to change their mind and repent, Proverbs 27 verse 1, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2, James 4 verse 14. Verse 30. And the king answered and said, Is not this great Babylon? which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty? Nebuchadnezzar must have felt secure and calm as he walked on the roof of his palace. He certainly felt immensely proud. Some years prior, he had been given a dream where his kingdom was portrayed as the golden head of a statue, Daniel 2 verses 36-38. One year before the events of this verse, he dreamed of a massive tree that was sentenced to be cut down in humiliation, Daniel 4 verses 10-17. Daniel indicated that this was an impending judgment on the king from God, Daniel 4 verses 24-26, calling on Nebuchadnezzar to repent, Daniel 4 verse 27. One year later, Daniel 4 verse 29, possibly thinking the danger had passed, the king was caught unprepared. King Nebuchadnezzar's ego was inflated as he peered over the city and applauded himself for his success. He didn't realize that his residence was about to shift from his palace to a field, Daniel 4 verse 28. Nor did he realize his majesty was going to vanish and be replaced with humiliation. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 predicts that during the end times, people will put faith in their own security, only to suffer sudden catastrophe. At the end of the tribulation another powerful ruler and restored Babylon will burst with pride, prosperity, and a false sense of peace only to see it all collapse, Revelation 17, 18. Verse 31. While the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, 
the kingdom has departed from you. A voice from heaven brought bad news to Nebuchadnezzar. This cut short his proud gloating, Daniel 4 verses 29-30. The voice announced the moment when the king's dream, Daniel 4 verses 10-17, was fulfilled, Daniel 4 verse 28. Daniel indicated the king would be driven insane and suffer the humiliating loss of his throne, Daniel 4 verses 24-26. When the voice from heaven spoke out, Nebuchadnezzar's arrogance and pride were suddenly interrupted. God's predicted judgment had begun. Jesus told a parable about a rich but foolish farmer, whose crops grew abundantly. In response, the man ignored spiritual concerns and planned to celebrate his own desires, Luke 12 verses 17-18. Feeling smug and secure, he reassured himself that he would be happy for a long time, because of his material success, Luke 12 verse 19. He quickly learned the error of his thinking. Without warning, he realized his life was over and the moment of judgment had arrived, Luke 12 verse 20. Like the foolish farmer, Nebuchadnezzar would learn a hard lesson about the temporary nature of wealth and power. Verse 32. And you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven periods of time shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. The king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, dreamed of a prospering tree which was sentenced to be cut to a stump. This dream also featured a decree for a man to be driven to animal-like madness, Daniel 4 verses 10-17. Daniel confirmed that this was a prophecy, the king would be judged to make him humble before God, Daniel 4 verses 22-27. A year passed before the prophecy was fulfilled, Daniel 4 verses 28-29. Nebuchadnezzar was smugly looking out over his kingdom when a heavenly voice declared his punishment had begun, Daniel 4 verses 30-31. As predicted, Nebuchadnezzar would be ostracized from society. He would eat grass like an ox, this either means he would think of himself as an animal or simply have a mindless, animalistic insanity. Fortunately this sentence was not permanent. It would last seven periods of time. Scholars vary on what those periods were. Other references to times in Daniel are generally interpreted as years, Daniel 7 verse 25. The next verse says the king suffered long enough for his hair and fingernails to become unkempt, Daniel 4 verse 33. Earlier this passage referred to 12 months, Daniel 4 verse 29, rather than, one year. There are no historical records of Babylon's king being incapacitated for seven years, let alone retaking the throne afterwards. For those reasons, some interpreters believe this insanity lasted seven weeks, or months, or some other, shorter span. What's more important is the purpose of the judgment, humility. Only when the king came to accept that God, the Most High, was sovereign, was his mind and kingdom restored, Daniel 4 verse 34. Undoubtedly, as Nebuchadnezzar looked with pride upon Babylon, he considered himself the most exalted ruler on earth. In earlier incidents, he arrogantly assumed that his will could even overcome that of a god, Daniel 3 verse 15. In this period of humiliation, he would learn a hard lesson. The one true God is infinitely more exalted and powerful than any earthly ruler. Nebuchadnezzar would leave his beautiful, comfortable palace and live like an animal. This would drain his pride and replace it with an awe of the Lord, James 4 verse 6. Verse 33. Immediately the word was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men and ate grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair grew as long as eagles' feathers, and his nails were like birds' claws. Nebuchadnezzar was spared from his humiliating judgment for a full year, Daniel 4 verses 28-29. As he bragged about himself on the roof of his palace, Daniel 4 verse 30, a heavenly voice declared that there would be no more reprieve, Daniel 4 verses 31-32. Without further delay, God carried out his predicted sentence against Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 4 verses 22-27. 
the once powerful king was reduced to an animal-like madness. Whether he thought of himself as an animal, or merely acted like one, scripture does not specify. The text does not say who drove Nebuchadnezzar away from others, or how it was done. It was the custom in Bible times to shun mentally ill persons, or to ignore them as much as possible, 1 Samuel 21 verses 12-15. Mark 5 verses 1-5 reports that a demon-possessed man roamed among tombs and mountains. Given that the king eventually regained his position, Daniel 4 verse 36, it seems likely he was kept in some form of isolation or custody, albeit outside and much like livestock. This description, given after Nebuchadnezzar had been restored, Daniel 4 verses 1 and 34, suggests the king was wandering with untamed, wild animals. In isolation Nebuchadnezzar ate food vastly different from his usual fare. The word used for, grass, here more generally means, fodder, or, plants, as in those consumed by livestock. He was exposed to the elements, including mud, dew, and rain as he foraged about in the open air. No doubt his hair was perfectly groomed when he lived in his palace, but now it became matted and tangled. He likely received manicures as king, but now his nails were overgrown and claw-like. Fortunately for the king, his madness was temporary. At the end of the full sentence imposed by God, Daniel 4 verse 34, seven periods of time, Daniel 4 verse 32, Nebuchadnezzar's mind and throne were restored, Daniel 4 verse 36. Verse 34. At the end of the days I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him who lives forever, for his dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. After a lengthy time of madness, Daniel 4 verse 33, King Nebuchadnezzar finally came to a humble admission that God, not the king of Babylon, was sovereign and supreme, Daniel 4 verses 22-27. Even this realization was part of God's merciful work on Nebuchadnezzar's behalf. An animal has no capacity to acknowledge God or to praise Him, but humans were created in God's image, Genesis 1 verse 27. Despite that image being marred by sin, people can still be restored to God and then worship Him, Romans 6 verse 23, Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 10. With his acknowledgement of the Most High, Nebuchadnezzar's sanity was restored. This humiliating experience proved effective. Restored, Nebuchadnezzar spoke with respect for God, whom he praised and honored as everlasting, Psalm 90 verse 2. He absorbed the intended lesson of his judgment, which was submission to the Lord, Daniel 4 verse 35. Perhaps Nebuchadnezzar's praise means he renounced his pagan idolatry. Some commentators believe he came to genuine faith in the one true God, the Most High. Scripture does not give enough detail to say, for certain. Nebuchadnezzar's successor certainly did not follow a faithful path, Daniel 5 verses 22-2. Verse 35. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, and he does according to his will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say to him, What have you done? Nebuchadnezzar's brand new faith in the Most High, Daniel 4 verse 34, is not described in detail. It is possible he learned great humility without fully renouncing his belief in Babylonian idols. However, it is also possible that the king came to understand that only the one true God was worthy of worship. At the very least, Nebuchadnezzar's new perspective understood the truth that God is sovereign. In contrast to God, mankind is nothing. Indeed, no human being has life without him. This fact will later be part of Daniel's scolding response to Nebuchadnezzar's successor, Belshazzar, who clearly lacked any faith in God, Daniel 5 verses 18-22. Scripture speaks about God creating Adam from dust and instilling the breath of life, Genesis 2 verse 7, into him. The Apostle Paul declared at Athens that God gives to all mankind life and breath and everything, Acts 17 verse 25. The Babylonian king also confessed that God's will was certain to become reality. 
Personal experience, Daniel 4 verses 28-34, prove that God could perform His will in Nebuchadnezzar's life. In addition, Nebuchadnezzar came to understand that God's will was beyond human skepticism. In his letter to the Romans, Paul said virtually the same thing. He declared, But who are you, O man, to answer back to God? Will what is molded say to its molder, Why have you made me like this? Romans 9 verse 20 Verse 36 At the same time my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my majesty and splendor returned to me. My counselors and my Lord sought me, and I was established in my kingdom, and still more greatness was added to me. As soon as Nebuchadnezzar humbly acknowledged the Most High and praised Him, his sanity returned, Daniel 4 verses 28-34. This was the purpose of his divinely appointed judgment, Daniel 4 verses 22-27 to learn humility. Those who acknowledge God by trusting in His Son Jesus as Savior begin to see things, including themselves, from God's perspective, Romans 12 verses 1-2, 1 Corinthians 2 verses 14-16. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 affirms that God has given believers a spirit not of fear but of power and love and self-control. Nebuchadnezzar's acknowledgement of the Lord also resulted in his restoration as Babylon's king. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar's reign was greater than it was before he acknowledged God's sovereign rule in his life and in affairs of government. Years later, Daniel would tell Nebuchadnezzar's successor, Belshazzar, that Nebuchadnezzar's glory was taken from him, Daniel 5 verse 20, until he knew that the Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he will, Daniel 5 verse 21. Verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, Praise and extol and honor the King of Heaven, for all His works are right and His ways are just, and those who walk in pride He is able to humble. Nebuchadnezzar's decree, Daniel 4 verse 1, ends with the warm attitude with which he began, Daniel 4 verses 1 to 3. He honors the Lord God, submitting to His rule by calling Him, the King of Heaven. Rather than insisting on His own supremacy, Nebuchadnezzar admits that God, not Himself, the king of Babylon, is always right and always good. This lesson in humility apparently convinced Nebuchadnezzar that God was justified to sentence him to temporary isolation and animal-like insanity. The king concludes with the reminder that God can humble the arrogant. The closing verses of Nebuchadnezzar's decree suggest that he had become a believer in the one true God. Some Bible teachers believe Daniel 7 verse 4 refers to Nebuchadnezzar as a lion with the wings of an eagle that was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man, and the mind of a man was given to it. They see this verse as evidence that he was truly converted. However, this probability is open to much debate. What is sure is that the formerly aggressive, temperamental king Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 2 verse 5, 3 15, had been deeply affected by his experience. Sadly Nebuchadnezzar's successor, Belshazzar, shows no signs of following in whatever faith his predecessor might have had, Daniel 5 verses 21-23. End of Daniel chapter 4 Please note The material used in this post, video is from biblaref.com which is from God Questions Ministries and is posted here to be read by immersive reader in the Edge browser. If you copy this material please follow these rules. Content from Biblaref.com may not be used for any commercial purposes, or as part of any commercial work, without explicit prior written consent from God Questions Ministries. Any use of our material should be properly credited, please make it clear the content is from Biblaref.com. Bibleref.com content may not be altered, modified, or otherwise changed unless such changes are specifically noted.